So welcome to Online Learning 3. Uh, this session is titled The Pauline Letters and it's been designed to help you to familiarise yourself with what scholars are talking about when they talk about Pauline letters and post-Pauline letters. Basically, this session is about which letters Paul wrote himself and which letters may have been written by the communities he planted after his death. So let's dive in. Paul was a church planter. He travelled around a wide geographical area, planting new church communities in towns and cities as he visited them. And when he was eventually killed in Rome, he left behind this big legacy of churches, theology and letters. So the churches that uh, he planted received a great deal of guidance from him throughout his life. And after he died, they would have been concerned with continuing to uh, faithfully follow the gospel message that Paul had given them before his death. The question then is what happens when the person who'd been writing letters to them, guiding them and helping them to work out their theology, dies. Where do they get their guidance from then? As Horrell questions, what's rather more open to dispute is where Paul's work ends and his legacy begins. In other words, there are certain letters in the New Testament that are ascribed to Paul but that it's unlikely that Paul wrote himself. And this wasn't unusual in letter writing in the ancient times. It shouldn't be taken uh, as, as though they'd fabricated letters, um, but it should instead be seen as sort of Paul's community sort of trying to work out what he would say in response to particular situations to the best of their ability, using all of the things that they'd learned from him during his later life. Whether or not Paul would have seen this as a useful thing to do is, is debatable. Um, but in summary, after his death, his congregations attempted to keep his legacy alive by developing and applying his theology to various issues and discussions that came to the fore of their lives. And I can hear you saying, okay, like, which of the letters then did Paul write? Well, it's generally agreed that the following letters were written um, by Paul. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, 1st Thessalonians, and Philemon. So the remaining letters ascribed to Paul, which are Ephesians, Colossians, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Hebrews, uh, could be viewed as a continuation of Paul's thought by his close followers after his death. Although, there are some scholars who suggest that Ephesians may have been a sort of variation of a generic letter that Paul sent to all of his churches, um, maybe kind of towards the end of his life. Now, there are various things that are examined to determine whether or not something was written by Paul or by the sort of post-Pauline tradition. And these things include sort of the style of writing, the theology that's in the writing, the vocabulary that's used, and the structure of the letters. And whether or not the remaining letters were written by Paul uh, isn't of a particular concern for the purposes of this module. Um, and it doesn't raise issues of their usefulness or their relevance to the church today. They're still there in the New Testament. They're there for interpretation and teaching and um, all of those things. But what it does raise is a question of the intentional development of Paul's theology then and what that might mean for the church and its ongoing sort of explorations of theology now. In the words of uh, of Dunn, any letter not necessarily written by Paul himself 
probably represents the Pauline heritage some little time after Paul's death, as seen from within. They express, we may say, the transition from Paul to Pauline. So if we're not sort of concerned with this specifically in this module, I can hear you now through your computer screen screaming at me, well, why does it matter which letters were penned by Paul? Well, one thing that's important in determining the author of a letter in the Pauline tradition is that it can help to date the letters, meaning we can tell where in the life of the early church an idea was introduced and perhaps why. So for example, 1 Timothy 3 shows that a particular set of offices had been developed within the churches. And as a result, the author of 1 Timothy used what they knew of Paul's theology and thought um, and sort of tried to determine what the best advice on the subject was. And they then presented their directions in the form of a letter written in Paul's name, almost saying, if Paul was here, this is what I think his advice would be. And this was useful for the churches because it maintained a sort of a tradition of advising and directing believers in important matters, uh, which Paul had already established within his lifetime. And it's perhaps um, similar to the practice of interpreting biblical texts to determine what Jesus might say today. Oftentimes, uh, the result of this prayerful study is that a person might say, having studied the scriptures, I've determined that God's saying that this is the best way to act in this situation. So I'm hoping that it's clear there that, that there's some sort of impact on our mission um, which is that by discerning where there are developments in the Pauline tradition, we can transfer similar patterns to our own responses and to the needs of the world. The implication is that everybody who follows the gospel and use Paul's letters as a, a source of theological direction are engaged in a long established practice of interpreting and and sort of developing and applying theological um, doctrines to different situations that Paul never encountered. So it is therefore important to engage in the activity of trying to hear Paul's voice and in the intentions of his letters. And that's what our purpose is in, in this, these sessions, to provide a foundation for going deeper into Paul's words and world, and to understand the different situations that we're in today, and how the use of the sort of Pauline theology will help us to develop ourselves as followers of Christ. So, to recap all of that, because it might well be new to some of you, We've seen that Paul likely wrote Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, 1st Thessalonians, and Philemon. And it's likely that the other letters ascribed to Paul were written by his followers after his death as a way with grappling with the world around them, using what they may have been taught by Paul throughout his ministry. And this is a useful way to picture our own mission and ministry today in relation to Paul, as we continue to progress Christianity using the letters as a basis for our own theology. So that brings us to the end of this session. Uh, we have one more online learning session before we can dive into the module at our learning weekend. So I'll see you in the next one.